Welcome to High Country Doula's webinar, Acupuncture for Pregnancy. We are here to share um, with everyone tonight more information about how acupuncture can be um, support you and your body as you go through pregnancy, birth, and beyond. I am happy to share, um, share that we have two lovely acupuncturists who are with us tonight. Um, my name is Allison Rollins and I'm the co-owner of High Country Doulas. I'm a labor and postpartum doula as well as an infant feeding specialist and love to help support women and their partners through birth. It's a really exciting time. I really um, want to support everyone out there with resources and information that they need to have the happiest and healthiest pregnancy possible. Um, today, we are going to have two wonderful acupuncturists who um, have experience working with women both before, during, and after birth. Um, as, as a doula, I really want women to know about all of the wonderful complementary care that, they, that can support them through their pregnancies um, and beyond. I'm really motivated to help you relieve your discomforts associated with pregnancy so that you have a more positive experience. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to us at High Country Doulas or to any of our guest acupuncturists. We're going to share their information with you in just a little bit. So let's dig a little bit deeper and find out more. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what I clicked on. All right. So Amanda Lightheart is a licensed acupuncturist, currently practicing in Kingsport, Tennessee, and um, she has been in the health field since 2001. She began working with mental and behavioral health, which was the fuel to transition her into more mind-body-based medicine and its effectiveness. Her joy in helping people discover their innate health, healing wisdom, regain health and balance, and live their life using advanced science and the mastery of ancient techniques for the best results. She holds advanced training and an associate's degree in therapeutic massage and body work, a master's degree in acupuncture and oriental medicine, and a bachelor's in nutrition from Midwest College of Oriental Medicine. She has also completed a Tibetan Buddhist meditation certificate with Lama Lobsan Paldin and is also certified aroma ac acupoint therapist. Welcome, Amanda. Hi, thank you. Excited to be doing this tonight. So traditional Chinese medicine, um, which dates back over 2,000 years, and its um, type of holistic natural health care, um, it stimulates the body's own innate healing um, mechanisms and takes into account various lifestyle factors to improve your health. Um, it really aims to correct a lot of different things in the body um, and things that affect us during pregnancy. Um, and before, such as infertility, headaches, chronic pain, um, indigestion, um, high blood pressure, and fatigue. So tonight, Amanda and our other guests are going to share a little bit more about the specifics of how um, acupuncture can help support the body, um, alleviate a lot of um, um, health concerns that you have, um, typical health concerns that we have during pregnancy, and um, and hopefully um, you'll learn lots more um, in tonight's webinar. All right. Next, let me introduce one of our, um, our other guests, Jennifer West. She is the founder and practitioner of West Wellness in Boone. 
She is a board certified acupuncturist and herbalist with over 19 years of experience in the holistic medical field. She received her four year master's degree in traditional Chinese medicine from Pacific College of Oriental Medicine in San Diego, California. She also completed an internal medicine internship at the Hubi, oh, Hubi Dazong Hospital in Huan, China. Probably pronouncing that incorrectly. <laughs> Sorry. She is certified in Feng Shui um, and as well and works with food, herbal therapy, and essential oils, as well as cupping and auricular acupuncture. She um, focus, um, practice focuses on Japanese meridian therapy, which is a gentle balancing and an effective therapy. Japanese style is wonderful um, for those that needle sensitivity, like um, for elderly and children. And her goal for, for you is to leave the office feeling relaxed, rejuvenated, and grounded. I will share with everyone both Jennifer and Amanda's contact information at the end of this we webinar, so you'll be able to reach out to them um, to get some wonderful acupuncture support. Thank you. Welcome, Jennifer. Thanks so much. Happy to be here. Um, just a little bit, not a lot of people know very much about or have heard about acupuncture, of course, and assume that it comes from China. Um, there is also um, another type of acupuncture called Japanese acupuncture, and we still are using the theory of Chinese medicine. Um, the main way that it is different is um, in the techniques, and um, it's the differences are with the um, needles are teeny tiny, a lot smaller. Well, not a lot. It's just the insertion um, is a lot more shallow. Um, the needles are thinner. Um, we do a lot of palpation uh, before and during our treatment. And um, also, moxibustion directly on the skin is used, and moxa is a wonderful herb that, in my um, opinion, is like my very favorite part of getting acupuncture because it's just very calming and relaxing, and it has a real wonderful way of calming down the nervous system and relaxing the body. Yes, Jennifer, I would just want to um, point out that. Um, I did work at an acupuncturist office for several mm -hmm. years and really enjoyed um, the moxa therapy. It was very calming and healing, and we did use that for women um, in pregnancy, and they really enjoyed that. It has a very um, grounding kind of smell to it. Um, it so that's really interesting that you um, use that a lot. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's and great. Mugwort has such an affinity for, um, for women. You know, just the herb itself is very nourishing for the mm -hmm. um, female um, reproductive system. Mm -hmm. I love it. And it's great for those people who are a little bit afraid of needles. Um, mm -hmm. We can use it in place of needles um, for children or for elderly or just people who are a little wary. Um, it, it works in a really wonderful way, just like the needles would, but just adds that extra calming effect. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I'm mm -hmm. glad you pointed that out. I didn't know that you could treat with just the yeah. moxa without the needles. Wonderful. We're going to learn more about the process of acupuncture. Amanda's going to share, share a little bit more about that. Yeah, so acupuncture, um, whether it's um, traditional Chinese or um, Japanese, we're working on a meridian system, and there's 12 major anatomical sections that are the meridians or channels they're also referred to, mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're a grouping of um, blood vessels, nerves, and muscles, and we can refer to the meridians like rivers inside your body, and where the river flows, it carries water and nourishment, and that's exactly what the meridian system is doing in our in our bodies and systems and um, you know just like anything else if it gets stopped up then we start to experience pain um, fatigue 
you know, a lot of other health issues. Um, and so what acupuncture is helping to do is keep that flow moving and keep the blood and nourishment um, moving through the system the way that it needs to. So, um, you know, when, when somebody comes in for an initial consultation, um, we go through different questioning and sometimes um, our questions can seem a little odd or things you haven't thought about before. And that's because of what we're looking to do is put together the patterns of how your body is um, presenting with whatever dysfunction or illness there is. And um, we're looking to them harmonize those meridian systems and um, get the body back to its optimal healing again. So during that initial consult, we're putting that together and then following that is treatment. And that's when we're going to be choosing points based off of the presentation of um, the patterns that you're experiencing and, and presenting. So typically, um, you'll see the needles left in for about 30 minutes. Um, you know, 15 to 30 is very common as well. And um, depending on, again, what's going on, 5 to 20 needles is, a, is typical. You know, more is not necessarily better. And um, you'll see that especially during pregnancy because um, there's a lot of points that we will stay away from. Sometimes less is more. So um, that is definitely common during, during those stages. Um, so yeah. And, um, oh, that's awesome, Amanda. Thanks for sharing. It gives me more of a picture and I think it gives our other audience some a picture of what's, what's going to happen. For those of you who might have never had acupuncture before, I think that um, the fear of, of, cor of correlating needles of acupuncture with the needles that we have to draw blood um, can skew the reality of what acupuncture looks like. Yeah. And so I remember um, when I took my child to get acupuncture for the first time and they, was, they were laying on the table and they were like, when are you going to start? And the acupuncturist was like, we've already finished. <laughs> Yeah, they, they really, a That's lot of people good. have no idea yeah. they're even going in, which is great. They're not the hypodermic needles that we mm -hmm. associate needle with. Yes. So they're literally the diameter of a human hair. Yes. So. Uh, yeah. that's, that's what's really fascinating. And I feel like I've had people tell me before that ac their acupuncture hurt. And I was like, really? Because the acupuncture that I experienced was very calming and very gentle and um, just it, it really helped me to relax. And I could, like you were talking about those rivers, almost felt like things were moving better and flowing better in my body. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. And those um, points that are contraindicated for us during pre pregnancy are the same points that we would use when we're trying to get labor going. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. And so, Jennifer, you did say that there are certain um, points that you might not use if a woman is in pregnancy until she nears her end. Correct. Ah, yeah. Okay. That's fascinating. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing, Amanda. Let's hear a little bit more about acupuncture for infertility. So, you know, I think that I don't, as women, we always hear these stories of our friends or family who have tried to get pregnant and have not had any luck and they've had all of the tests and everything looks normal when they go to their Western doctor, their OBGYN, and even having their um, spouse is tested and their numbers are coming back fine. And so it becomes a little bit of a head scratcher of why can't I get pregnant? Mm -hmm. And, you know, their Western medicine, you know, their next alternative is IVF or IVI. Um, that's kind of where they go. But you know, which a lot of people can't afford or they just want to stay in the natural realm. So um, acupuncture can be a good alternative for that. Exactly. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, and I think 
you know, we have a lot of people who come in to see us and they have actual diagnosis of um, endometriosis or polycystic ovarian syndrome. So they have okay. these Western diagnosis um, or habitual miscarriages even, mm -hmm. or just odd periods, um, trouble ovulating. Um, we can, of course, treat all of those specific Western diagnosis with acupuncture, but it's those sort of unknown reasons. And um, one of the things that I've found in helping people, I've treated a lot of those unknown reasons. And a lot of that has to do with uh, viral loads, heavy metals, um, and so we can talk about all of those sort of things, um, offer some herbs that are safe to be taken during pregnancy, um, some foods that will help clear out viral loads, that will help safely eliminate heavy metals. And Jennifer, you're speaking directly to things that maybe aren't tested in their regular doctor, that they're not testing for, so they don't have the awareness of what's going on with that person's. Um, why that person's not having um, luck with um, right. conception. Okay. Right, that they just, they're just not getting any answers of why it is that they're not getting pregnant. Okay. And do you Often. particularly do, um, how do you um, find out those sources? Do you do that through sort of an intake and what's that yeah, process Yeah, it's like? part of the intake, intake um, process and, you know, questions around, one of, one of the viruses that um, impede fertility is Epstein-Barr virus. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that particular virus is it doesn't always show up on tests because it likes to kind of hide out in the organs, in the liver, and um, it gets triggered when there's, when there's stress and sometimes wow. even when they become pregnant you start having all of these sort of weird symptoms. So it's one of those things, as we all know, viruses do, they go dormant. And so when they're dormant, they're not going to show up on tests. So sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think we have that same issue sometimes with women who have yeast or um, um, group B strep, those kind of things. Exactly. That overgrowth, that something that normally exists in low amounts in most people, but can be higher in other people. Exactly. And the best, the best buddy of Epstein-Barr is strep. So often when you have one, you have the other. And strep likes to hang out down in the, the bladder and the reproductive organs. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I could see that that could be an, a big issue. Well, that's also closely related or cl close by to the center of women's fertility. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure you see too, um, you know, especially in this day and age, a lot of moms coming in or a lot of women coming in um, that are just under so much stress with, you know, their, their work, their, um, you know, just life in general, maybe more kids and that being a huge proponent of why they can't get pregnant. And, um, you know, I like to talk to patients a lot too about, you know, your body doesn't know the difference of stress work and being chased by a bear in the woods. And, right. you know, uh, being chased yeah. by a bear in the woods is not safe to bring a child into. And um, the acupuncture really works with helping to reduce stress. And so, you know, even just the act of coming in, getting on that table, relaxing and um, getting treatment, you know, we're helping to balance up the stress hormones and um, just calm the nervous system in general. And so, you know, for those, for those moms that are, you know, and, and want to be moms that are very stressed, you know, acupuncture can be um, a really big part of a successful pregnancy. You, I love the way that you put that, um, Amanda. I think it's really, um, there's so much stress that goes into, for some women, conceiving and then also during pregnancy. So if we already have anxiety or, or anxious or we already have a lot of stress through our work or our family going through pregnancy, extra stress I could see would add to the body's um, just imbalances. And then that, you know, pregnancy may be have more um, um, issues or concerns, um, maybe 
that come out. Do you see that a lot? Yeah, I do. I see a lot of moms that, you know, again, these are the ones where typically everything is checking out normal. Um, and the, it typically what I'm finding tends to be that, you know, it's the stress levels are so high. And once, once they start calming and, you know, we're doing visualization, things like that, then um, they typically are getting pregnant more, you know, more often than not. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you both ladies for sharing about that. I think a lot of women and um, their partners are really looking for some um, alternatives and some options when it comes to um, being able to conceive when they're um, really struggling with that. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Hmm. As far as the reasons for infertility, I know we kind of went over some of that. Nope. Okay. Let's move on. Let's talk. Um, Jennifer's going to share with us about what um, types of nutrition and support sh that she works with um, women in, during pregnancy. So I feel like there are always so many... It, it feels like right now there are so many diets and different fads and um, you know, there's the high protein and the high fat diet, the keto thing. And then there's the vegan thing and the gluten-free thing and whole 30. There yes. are just lots of things. And, and for me, um, I, think that it's important for everybody to kind of decide what works the best for them. And, you know, the things that I'm really strong about are um, having your diet be more plant-based, especially when you're pregnant. I don't have a problem with meats. I just think, you know, organic and clean is number one in my book, just because of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Those are really, really important to stay away from when you're pregnant or when you're not pregnant, <laughs> it's just yes. in general. So, so are, are pregnant women more vulnerable to those, would you say? Well, I think that... being pregnant, is, it's a huge trigger when your hormones are, are doing weird things. You know, there are, it, it can trigger things that have been dormant. So you know, keeping your diet as clean as possible, lots of fruits and veggies. And I always tell people to look up the clean 15 so they can, and everyone yeah. feels that organic is really expensive. Well, you can look at those fruits and veggies that are most likely sprayed with pesticides and those that are pretty safe to buy conventional. Mm -hmm. um, I love that list. I've used that yeah. a lot and I, I've almost memorized a lot of them. <laughs> It's really it's great. really helpful when you're trying to budget. Um, it is. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't know that potatoes, specifically Yukons and russets, are really, really great for increasing breast milk. And they're really strongly antiviral. Um, I know that potatoes, white potatoes, fall into this, like, white food, don't eat it category. But... Um, potatoes are really, really good for you. So I'm yes. a potato. And I'm assuming too, Jennifer, that with, with vegetables, we know that the skin of vegetables contains a lot of nu nutrients as well Correct. as a lot of fiber. Correct. So when you're talking about eating potatoes, you know, eating that with the skin or don't um, take the skin off when you're making mashed potato, you know, like those kind exactly. of things. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I do think it's important to eat with the seasons too, you know, in the summer eating, you know, lots of fruits and fresh greens and salads. And then in the winter times cooking your vegetables, you know, just makes it a little easier on your digestive system. Um, I think that's yes. a really great And it thing. just makes you feel good. <laughs> it does make you feel good. Yes. Yeah. Um, Dates and raw honey are really, really great for regulating your blood sugar, and um, they make your liver really happy. Um, oh, that's really wonderful. We do work with some moms, you know, for pregnancy that women may not have had blood sugar issues before, but then that mm -hmm. comes up for them. And so they get into that space of 
sort of borderline um, gestational diabetic right. or you change your diet and modify your diet, you probably right. won't, will be fine. Yeah. And so I've worked with a lot of moms cause I'm a health coach as well, who, you know, with just a couple adjustments and food pairings and those kind of things, they have able to navigate um, that um, blood sugar issue without having right. to take medication or anything for it. Right. And, and I think there is a lot of misinformation out there for diabetics around um, fruit and ah. dates and raw honey not being okay. And those fruit and dates and raw honey are all okay and they're very safe for your blood sugar. Um, and I just want to get that, that info out there because it, it's such healing food mm -hmm. and so important. And, um, you know, one other thing that I think is interesting is, you know, this keto diet, which is the high fats and high proteins, um, are really, really hard on your liver. And when you're when you're pregnant, your immune system, you know, everything is going to growing this human. And mm -hmm. so, you know, giving your liver as much support and help as possible is, is what you want to do. And when you're having a lot of fats and proteins, it just makes that job so hard for the liver because, you know, it's got to filter everything you're, you're putting on your skin, everything you're eating, everything you're breathing, you know, mm -hmm. It's got such a gigantic job. So, yeah, um, well, it's filtering everything that comes into your body. Exactly. So, we want to keep our, our, our organs working properly, and um, which will make us feel better and to have a healthier pregnancy for sure. Was there any um, other types of things that you would recommend? I, I do know I have people ask me all the time as pregnant, like, will dates really help me go into labor early? And I always send them to evidence-based birth because there's an article on <laughs> dates um, about that because it's just one of those things that is a popular sort of talking thing. Do you have moms who ask you about that? or You know, I haven't had a lot of moms that have asked me about dates, but balsamic vinegar, ah. I've, had, <laughs> I've had a couple of people, I've had a few um, say that that really works and they just have a super vinegary salad when they're wanting to go into labor. And it's I have a girlfriend who's had four and that's been her. Oh, her balsamic drink. vinegar. <laughs> balsamic vinegar. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Amanda? Have you had well, any? Yeah, I did. It was, um, I remember my midwife was telling me about it and, um, I'm from just outside of Chicago and I was friends with a, you know, a good handful of doulas up there and they all recommended it. And so I know when I was pregnant, I went out to Costco and bought the biggest box of dates. I could find. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I went a while without eating dates after yeah. that. I'll tell you that. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah well, I definitely heard that, you know, the benefits of it. Yeah. Yes. Well, I do love it. I always say, well, you know, dates, eating dates is not going to harm you at all. And if it helps right. you, that's wonderful. Right. Yeah. You know, you can wrap them in bacon, stuff them with goat cheese, you know, there's so many fun yes. things to do with them. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And you could definitely, I mean, chop them and do all kinds of things with dates yeah. for sure. For sure. I love it. Any other um, things that you'd like to cover that you haven't shared yet? Um, the, there were a couple of supplements and herbs that I would like to mention. Um, okay. And these are ones that you mentioned that you, you um, work with moms who are pregnant and and um, yes. recommend them. Okay. And, and yeah, are asking about prenatals and <laughs> what's safe to take, what's not safe to take. And um, my recommendation is usually to add spirulina, which is um, the Hawaiian, get it from Hawaii, actually. Um, the powder or the tablets and then barley juice grass powder, which is gluten-free. It's um, also in powder or capsules. I think that is a perfect alternative to a prenatal vitamin. There are so many wonderful um, minerals, aminos, yeah, everything that you would yeah. need. Yeah, yeah. Really good nutrients okay. in those. So the, um, 
those are something that you would recommend if a person didn't want to or wanted an alternative to taking prenatal vitamins or you or were working with just them. as an yeah even just mm -hmm. as an additional mm -hmm. okay wonderful thing and they could do it in smoothies or just use it as capsules sometimes it's just extra work to make smoothies but yeah um, mm -hmm. you can get it in either tablet or capsules really 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 wonderful and then a little drop of the um, nisid iodine is really great for just helping to balance um, the thyroid that endocrine system and it's really good for the baby okay awesome yeah. well I know we have a lot of women out there who are wanting to have some support with that so they can definitely reach out to you and find out more um, any other things that you um, feel like are really important um, we kind of talked a little bit about um, pesticides and herbicides and fungicides. Um, it's not just on your food, it could be on your grass, um, cleaning um, your bath and body products, your uh, cleaning products. You just, you just want to be very mindful of coming in contact with any sort of chemicals. Um, and then I'm sorry to say chocolate is not good for pregnancy. Oh dear, is that really, is terrible to hear. <laughs> no, it's upsetting. Um, but it's really stimulating for developing babies and um, it does have some alkaloids that are not, not great healthy. For the and baby. so just the, also the, the caffeine, is that similar to Correct. Like, yeah, yeah, the coffee because it can yeah. stimulate. I know I have a lot of women who say, I have my cup of coffee and I can feel my baby go, uh yeah right. um just that that impact so trying yeah. to go to decaf or switch to some alternatives like some teas warm teas and stuff like that because we do yes. love just that warm cup of something i yeah. know to, yeah and there's sure. so many really nice good safe herbs um you know like nettles it's like such a beautiful herb that has so many vitamins and minerals that would be safe to drink during pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, and get that nice warm drink in too Yes, like to have an alternative that's yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. That sounds wonderful. And we can put some raw honey in it, right? So <laughs> can. if you want to. So thanks so much for sharing with that. You did mention, do you, um, Jennifer, um, feel like people need to really wash their fruits and vegetables? Is that an important piece of that? Like being clean, um, you if know, they, especially if they can't get organic? With conventional, yes, I think it's really, really important to wash them very well. Um, mm -hmm. With organic, you know, organic veggies have some nice prebiotics on them, so I don't, I don't wash them super great. I'll, I'll give them a, a little quick rinse, but I'm not, um, I'm not overly washing like I would a conventional okay. veg or fruit. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well. Thanks so much for sharing about that. Let's talk about, um, we did talk about a couple of things to avoid during pregnancy, but let's talk about um, if you want to add anything here that we didn't hit on in our last slide. Uh, the only thing um, that I didn't touch on was, and, and this is another thing that I think will, will upset some, some folks is avoiding eggs and dairy. Um, specifically eggs really feed viruses and it, and the eggs really feed Epstein-Barr and um, and then you know dairy eggs really, in all forms all forms no matter how happy those chickens are they're just not honestly they're not the super duper health foods that they've been touted <laughs> um, if that said, if you are dealing with chronic illness, autoimmune stuff, mm -hmm. I really tell people to avoid eggs. I know for some people can eat them and it works for them and, and they don't have any issues. But if you're if if they're coming to see me for something chronic, I usually recommend no eggs or dairy. And it just it does tend to cl um, clog up your lymph system okay. as well. Okay. Now, I also um, just want to mention, you know, other things, other foods and harmful agents would be, of course, alcohol and cigarette and tobacco products. Do you help support in, have you ever helped support people who might have been previously using those things to help them transition if they become pregnant? 
or have any recommendations for that? I mean, certainly we can help with uh, smoking addiction. Okay. I haven't, I haven't done a lot. Uh, well, I've done sure around addiction in general. Um, Amanda, how about you? Yeah, I've, um, I've worked quite a bit with helping to, to quit smoking. Um, I can't say that I've, I've had that with a lot of moms that I've worked with, but right. in general, you know, just acupuncture can really help with cutting those cravings. And um, I think even just helping with detoxifying the body too. Absolutely. And, you know, add that spirulina in and, um, you know, you're going to really, you know, we can really do a lot to help, you know, that process along. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing so much. All right. And Amanda, um, you're going to share a little bit more to help us understand what that research says about, like, what's um, about acupuncture and what it's doing? Yeah. So it's, um, you know, we're entering a really great time right now for this medicine because, um there's so much more research going on, um, you know, where there's a lot of great things in Western medicine, but then there's a lot of things that they're not able to um, address and um, not necessarily have all the answers for. And they're, they're starting to find that acupuncture um, and just orange medicine in general are able to answer a lot of those questions. So the, the research is becoming greater, which is fantastic for us. Um, so, and, and, you know, most people who have had acupuncture know that it does enhance your relaxation. We see lower stress levels and, you know, increasing the feel good, um, you know, and, and just releasing those beta endorphins, which are going to help with pain relief and just an overall um, sense of well-being. And um, so one of the studies at the Center for Integrative Medicine conducted a meta-analysis, which is an evaluation on published research regarding a specific topic. Um, in this case, the effects of acupuncture on IVF outcomes. And the meta-analysis results concluded when acupuncture took place on the day of embryo transfer, statistically significant improvements were found in the rates of clinical pregnancies, ongoing pregnancies, and live births. So just that alone is awesome. Wow. Yeah, that's, so, that's huge. Merging the Western with the um, Oriental um, medicine components there, that, that's just fantastic. I know I've done some research on the stuff they're doing at Duke University, which is here in North Carolina, integrating acupuncture with Western medicine there and looking at the outcomes there. So that's awesome. It's a great, great, great news for parents, right? Yeah, it is. Hopefully it's parents. great. So, and you know, and a couple other things that, you know, that they're finding is that acupuncture may improve sperm quality and counts in mm -hmm. previously, you know, known for um, infertile men, um, improving the lighting of the endometrium, including increasing the blood flow to the uterus. Um, we're also seeing that acupuncture can regulate hormone levels and, um, you know, PCOS and, you know, when, when, when cycles, you know, women aren't ovulating, um, we're finding that it's helping with thyroid problems and um, also increasing the number of follicles produced during IVF treatment. So a lot of great things. And, you know, again, it's, you know, what I love about all of this is, you know, our bodies are designed to heal themselves and this medicine um, really encourages that, you know, and it puts the power back in the patient by getting all systems go, you know, and, and mm -hmm. making the body, you know, just do what it's meant to do best. So it's really neat to see that we're now showing that through research. Yeah, I just, I always thought it was fascinating when I would lay down the acupuncture and source those rivers and channels and meridians connecting with our organ systems. And yeah. that's just, and, and every time I have like a specific pain and a point, I always wonder like, is that my bladder channel or my, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I'm like, something's going on. Something's right. happening. Well I love when patients come in and they're like, I have pain here. And they literally are tracing a meridian system. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then they're like, oh, and this and this and this. And you're like, yeah, that's your kidney. You know, your, you know, your kidney chi. And it's really cool how, um, 
you know, it, it's, it's tangible at that point. It's not this, you know, you know, elusive thing that we're talking about. It's like you are truly experiencing the magic of that right then and there by, by having that experience. So. And it is a sort of holistic kind of like whole body care. So you can address many different issues in one, one, you know, well, I'm, yeah. one treatment, but I'm sure they might need more, but just in general, like, well, and that's simultaneous. Right. And that's a whole thing with the patterns. You know, we can see somebody who, you know, may has ringing in their ears, who um, is having some um, fertility issues. Maybe they have some low back pain and, and soreness in their knees and um, they're cold often, you know, for us, that's one, that's a, that's a pattern, you know, instead mm -hmm. of these random floating symptoms that, you know, they might just think that they're experiencing. And so it is really neat to, um, yeah, we're going to address all that today in one treatment because, you know, it's all linked. It's all, it's all kind of one thing. So. Yes. That's fantastic. Well, let's um, talk a little bit about um, the safety aspects of acupuncture during pregnancy. Can you share a little bit more, Amanda, about that? Yeah. So, um, oops, sorry. I just, so um, yeah, acupuncture is incredibly safe during, during pregnancy. Um, of course, I always encourage people to go to a licensed acupuncturist. Um, you know, our training we learn about the points to use and not use, you know, we learn again to identify those patterns and what's going to be safe for you during treatment um, or, you know, during, during your pregnancy and during your treatment. So it's really, that's a huge part of it. Um, and acupuncture is very safe during all phases of acupuncture, or I'm sorry, during pregnancy, you know, that first trimester, we can help support and hold, which is what we're looking to do. We can help, yes. you know, wow. really, yeah, That's um, awesome. which is great for women who have experienced multiple miscarriages, knowing that, you know, we can help, um, secure that fetus, you know, um, you know, a lot of these, um, first trimester, you know, not feel goods, which we'll go into a little bit more, you know, we can work with that. And then um, during, during kind of the bigger portion of pregnancy, you know, we're able to, to help relieve a lot of um, the pregnancy side effects, if you want to say, and again, just helps help, I think, get the body prepped um, for carrying that baby. And man, the body changes so fast during pregnancy. You know, uh, you're, you're, uh, yes. yeah, <laughs> we've you all know. been pregnant. So it's, yeah, like, yes, it's like by the sure. time you get so used to one thing, something else changes and acupuncture can really help with those transitions and just prep the body for an easier, um, smoother labor. So yeah, it's, it's definitely very safe and effective for, for all stages. That's wonderful. Well, you mentioned too about a licensed acupuncturist. How does, how are acupuncturists licensed and how does that, if someone's trying to seek out somebody, I know they can definitely go see you, um, uh, yeah, but. Come see us. <laughs> yeah, so our process is um, we have master's degrees in acupuncture and oriental medicine. So um, it is a long process. Um, we have quite a significant amount of clinical time as well that we're doing in school. After that, we have to take three to four board exams. Um, to even just be able to get licensed. And then after that, you have your national license and your, your state license. Okay. And on top of that, you also have malpractice insurance that you have to. Um, yes, sure. So, yeah. So a lot of the things that we go through are um, even you know similar to what your physicians have, it, have had to go to, to get their license as well. And um, you know, that's why, you know, you don't want to just, go to maybe a physical therapist or chiropractor who's done a weekend seminar and drank. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, they might not know that, you know, this point GB 21, you know, isn't to be used during um, pregnancy. You know, that's at the very tail end to get things moving. Well, a lot of women mm -hmm. do have pain here during pregnancy right. um, mm -hmm. because of the tension and, if you don't know that, you know, you could cause some um, adverse things that we don't want to see happen during, during the, the pregnancy stage. So, yes. So you're saying that other <clears throat> care providers for other things trained a little bit in acupuncture wouldn't be 
a safe choice because of that. So they, are, they don't have the, they don't have the extensive training that you would have. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I find it so interesting that, that a chiropractor can go and do a, you know, a weekend workshop and, and they can, you know, offer that as a service, but I wouldn't feel comfortable taking a weekend workshop, cracking someone's neck. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, do you know what I mean? It's absolutely. just kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We need to stick with our <laughs> yeah. the, the, the very, very highly trained providers for sure. Because really we training. had to, we had to have two, at least two to four years before the four year program. Right. Yeah. 20 yeah. years ago, it was just two years. I think now they're heading more towards having to have a bachelor's. I had to have a bachelor's when I entered yep. school and I started in 2007. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I just missed that. <laughs> yeah. So many, still, so, many yeah. so many acupuncturists have had lots and lots of years of training and yeah. clinicals and before they can ever start. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's a big, yes. It is um, amazing. All of the information that you um, have to know. <laughs> right. Yeah, yes, for sure. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. We just really want to make sure that um, women out there are making the right choices when they, reach out and get support through acupuncture and if they're in the um, western north carolina or eastern northwestern tennessee they can see you amanda in kingsport or you jennifer in boone yeah. but if they're outside of that they may need to know exactly what they need to look for <laughs> so, yeah to be and sure. there are resources there are websites you can go to make sure the person has their a licensure and all of that ah, great Absolutely. that's that's important for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's talk a little bit about treating some of those symptoms that you may or may not have during pregnancy. We're going to um, start with one that is fairly um, uh, severe for some women who have this. Um, Jennifer, mm -hmm. you want to share a little bit about this? Sure. Um, the hyperemesis. So, this is a terrible condition that um, happens in the very beginning where you're just, you know, we've heard of the usual morning sickness, which is in the, the first trimester, but this is like excessive, excessive nausea and vomiting. Um, uh, Princess Kate had it, you know, in the royal family with all four. She has four now, right? I think. Anyway, I'm, she not, had, the, I'm not, not the person to ask about that. <laughs> She's had it with every single one and she ends up having to be bedridden because ah. you just can get severely dehydrated. You don't want to eat anything, obviously, because you're nauseous and vomiting and your electrolytes get out of whack and you just get fatigued and it's, it's pretty f scary. So mm -hmm. um, it's not something that you want to come up during your pregnancy. Um, and, you know, there have been some great studies which have shown that acupuncture can really, really reduce that um, yuck, nausea and vomiting feeling um, pretty quickly. So that's really exciting. Wow, that is it's really too bad exciting. no one told Princess Kate about this. Oh, right. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, because I think that there, um, the show called The Midwife, one of the characters on there, she had that and she said that uh, somebody saved her life because she was having kidney failure oh, maybe man. from this and didn't realize it. So she's a big advocate of like helping. I think it's this one. I could be wrong. It's one of those, <laughs> but I do know um, it's, it's really important to get support through that and just to have to know that you could go to acupuncture and get lots of reduction in your symptoms. Absolutely. It's a great reason to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. It and, is. you know, and, and even, um, I like to point out too, that, you know, because we are medical, um, with more severe things like, you know, the, um, hyperemesis, um, we, as acupuncturists can be in contact with your physician too, and, um, be able to, you know, you have a couple different eyes on you then, um, as far, you know, monitoring your progress with things like this. So I think that's important that, you know, that people know that they can kind of have that team approach um, because, you know, that's going to be scary for moms. Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. 
It is, you feel, I mean, I can imagine just feeling um, so poorly and also worrying about how it's going to affect your baby. But that collaborative care that you're speaking of, Amanda, is so important. And as, you know, practitioners and providers, we want to be able to um, supply our, um, our patients, our women that we treat with that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the effects that acupuncture can um, have for women who are struggling with depression and anxiety. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I really, um, I'm so glad we're talking about this one because, you know, a lot of women go into pregnancy with depression and anxiety already. And again, all those different hormonal changes I think can just increase, um, that, you know, for them even more. And, you know, I don't, you know, many women don't know approximately one in five women suffer from depression during pregnancy. And that's according to the American Congress of um, Obstetricians and Gynecology, or Gynecology, I'm not going to say (laughs) <laughs> Gynecologist, yes. <laughs> Thank you, that one. <laughs> um, and, you know, so it's, it's, that's a pretty big number. And knowing that there's support out there um, that doesn't have to be pharmaceuticals, you know, because I think that's a big concern is here I'm, you know, I'm carrying this baby and I don't want to have to put pharmaceuticals in my system, but yet I'm mm-hmm. feeling really crummy and not sure how I'm going to make it through this, knowing that you have options. Um, and where yes. acupuncture is so effective for anxiety and depression. Um, again, I would you know, even go back to being able to combine um, good nutrition with that as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as acupuncturists, you know, both Jennifer and I, and most of the acupuncturists you're going to see are going to be trained in um, nutrition, guide Mm -hmm. you in that realm as well. So, so being able to support that whole, whole body and all the aspects that can lead to or worsen um, mental health Mm -hmm. issues as you're going through that. I um, have um, advanced training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. And one of the things that I find with women is that if you've already experienced depression or anxiety prior to conceiving, then you're going to be more likely to that. And so there's things that we can set in place to help that safety net. So like acupuncture in itself could be that one of those safety nets. Nutrition could be that safety net. Um, as well, you know, that the, um, sleep is a big issue, um, Mm -hmm. that can worsen this. And so acupuncture does address that as well. Right. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yes. We need that sleep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but no, it's, um, you know, for depression, anxiety, PTSD, um, bipolar disorder, you know, I was really lucky to be able to work with a psychiatrist, um, up in Chicago and, you know, um, we would, we would refer patients back and forth and she was, you know, very open to the holistic realm, which was great. And Mm -hmm. she would report how like the patients she was seeing who would be getting acupuncture would just be flourishing. They'd be doing so great. They might not be having to take as much medication, um, you know, just having less, you know, issues with, with, you know, moods becoming unstable. And so, um, you know, just, just knowing that is such a big deal, you know, again, that there's other options out there. That, that collaborative care can be so impactful to a, a, a person's experience in their health outcomes. I think that, you know, we, um, we, when we see that happen, you know, the, the, the patient or, or, um, person who is the recipient of that is really going to um, be, um, I don't know, going to have a better, fuller experience in their healing of whatever they're dealing with. And I think that's so, it's it's so important. I think as a doula, I think about that every day because I am there to work with the providers to support them as they are supporting the um, women through pregnancy and birth and postpartum <clears throat> and collaborative care can really help make that full circle so that they're totally have that safety net that they need um, to be able to thrive. I do want to mention that depression and anxiety can happen um, throughout pregnancy as well into the postpartum okay. period. Yeah. 
And, you know, during pregnancy, we may or may not have children already, but when we do have children, that extra impact to Mm -hmm. (laughs) the lack of sleep. Yeah. So if we don't experience it in pregnancy, sometimes with that sleep deprivation, it can, it can definitely hit women hard. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. And so mm-hmm. acupuncture can really be that one extra like piece of self-care. Um, not only is it something to do for yourself and to spend time in a relaxed state, but it also addresses what is going on with that, um, that woman, you know, and I think it's yeah. just a beautiful thing to be able to support women to be able to be the mothers that they want to be. Yeah. And, you know, I love that you guys offer placenta encapsulation as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause you know, I, man, that's any mom that can do that. I highly, highly encourage you to do so because boy, does that make a big difference in, um, you know, that, that postpartum depression and being able to just get through that, that initial stage there. Yes. Amanda, I'm so glad you mentioned that because our, our, Placenta encapsulation that we do at High Country Doulas is really a a safe and effective way to help support a woman's postpartum recovery, um, not only for her physical self, but also her emotional and mental health, um, because it does replenish back into the body a lot of um, wonderful uh, nutrients and um, iron that can help support a woman as, as well as hormones. So it's really um, what we've seen with a lot of the moms that have um, had their placenta encapsulated. We do it very safely because we steam it um, with lemon and ginger, which is a traditional Chinese medicine type of way. And then we dehydrate it. And so it, um, all the germs are killed out of it with the steaming process. And then we dehydrate it and encapsulate it. And a lot of moms really um, enjoy that. They feel like that they have more energy they, their mood stabilization is much um, better improved. So we do that. And I, I know a lot of women who didn't do it with their first and with their second, they're like, that's what I need. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about those physical aspects of pregnancy um, concerns that a lot of women um, like low back pain. Oh, the dreaded low back pain. Um, Yeah, so that really can come, I think, at any phase of of pregnancy as well. Um, But, you know, the tendency is usually toward the latter part when you have this extra weight in the front and you can't get comfortable and sleeping is tricky and your hips are hurting and, um, you know, there have been some great studies done um, comparing getting acupuncture treatments to physical therapy where, you know, um, the people are getting, you know, 10 treatments of either one and rated the, the pain before, during and after. And both of the groups had similar um, effects after, before the treatments. However, actually, the acupuncture was a lot better as so far as their the degree pain of reduction. pain relief. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's significantly lowered more than just having the physical therapy or. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because all of those channels, the bladder channel runs up the back. We have gallbladder channel runs down the, the sides of the hips and mm-hmm. Oh, I remember I just could not get comfortable and I ended up having to sleep in a chair sort of halfway sitting up and actually my husband and I met in acupuncture school. So he was able to give me treatments when I was pregnant. So that was really awesome. But that was one of the the things towards the end of my pregnancy was my hips. They were just horribly painful. Yes. And um, I kind of yeah. had my chair, I had my, <laughs> my spot and And um, he would give me um, treatments probably every other day there those last few months just for just aches and pains. It was, it was really, really a lifesaver that and baths, hot baths. That's a great story, (laughs) Jennifer. Uh, I'm glad you had a personal experience that you could share, but you're not the only one who has dealt with that, that low back pain. 
Mm-hmm. Hip pain. A lot of yeah. women do experience hip pain, round ligament pain. Yes, exactly. lots of that. Just the extra added weight and pressure and the shifting of the organs to make room for baby. Um, the relaxin that's happening in the body and that extra <laughs> looseness that we have. Yes. It's very intense. Yeah. So a really so. nice um, way to spend time, you know, relaxing with some acupuncture to support that um, redu- pain reduction. Absolutely. And, and what it, what is the outcome that you're going to get as well is better sleep. Yes, which is so crucial. Oh, it's, it is. Isn't it? Yes. And you just want to like get all that sleep you can, especially right before you know that babe is coming because then it's, you know, it's a totally different story. So yeah, being as comfortable as you can during that time to, you know, get that is so great. Oh yes. Like just sort of like front load. (laughs) Because you know when the baby comes, there will be not much sleep happening. Exactly. So yes. (laughs) That and eating nutritious, lovely foods and spending lots of time with your your partner. It's just, yes, so important. So, well, thanks for sharing. I know that um, women can really help get some support from going to see you ladies. Yes. Um, We do know that acupuncture can help um, women who may have energy. Um, Some women really experience a lot of um, fatigue during pregnancy. Would you like to speak to that? Yeah, you know, again, um, you know, because of the body, it's just rapid changes during pregnancy and um, so much of your nutrition is going to baby, you know, it is, it is like growing a baby is like another full-time job, Um, (laughs) (laughs) right? It is, it is. um, And, you know, to be able to just even get an ounce more of energy can make such a big deal because, you know, our lives don't stop outside being pregnant. We're still going Mm -hmm. to work. We're still caring for other children, our families. Um, And to not have that energy can just be really daunting. So, you know, yes, acupuncture, you know, helps support those systems, the spleen, kidney, heart, really, really all the meridian systems, I think, in the body, if they're out of whack or being taxed, affect energy in their own ways. And acupuncture will help to, um, again, balance, harmonize, and, you know, boost that chi up so, so you do feel revitalized again. Um, and, you know, I know another, another big one, too, is the, the brain function. I mean, I know I mm-hmm. joked, like, I was Pregnancy like, Pregnancy brain. That, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was not my placenta. That was the brain <laughs> that came out. You know, because you just go, word recall, like, gone. You know, just these different, <laughs> like, memory. What was that again? You know, and that can be... Um, a really tough shift. And so, you know, again, just like with the energy, we know that acupuncture is helping to feed the brain and helping to get the systems that, that do like the kidney, the kidney meridian, um, and the kidney organ system in Chinese medicine is huge for brain function. And so we help with that. And, and again, nutrition, you know, eating Mm -hmm. walnuts, eating black sesame seeds and honey, and, you know, being able to help you, um, gear your nutrition more to feeding your brain is Ah, that's that's wonderful I didn't I I mean I sort of know that but just thinking about it and it makes such sense because the brain is made up of like fats and yeah and what it Mm -hmm. needs is yeah there's great foods yeah so um yeah there's so many different things that can be done and again I think the placenta encapsulation too is huge Mm -hmm. for um because you know when you're talking depression anxiety you're talking brain health um Mm -hmm. And so it, it definitely anything you can do during that time to um, help you feel energy, you know, just emotionally better and mentally better is going to naturally just feed your, your whole energy system and help with that boost. Yeah. And that nutrition, so that gut brain um, yeah. connection there is just amazing. And I just have to go back to the placenta because, you know, I, I go to births a lot and see lots of placentas and it just this picture especially um up on the powerpoint reminds me of like the folds of the yeah. right, yes, it totally of the maternal side of the placenta 
Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. And you know, and that's very much Chinese medicine is, you know, mm-hmm. again, look at, look at a walnut. What does it look like? Yeah. You know, it looks like a brain, mm-hmm. you know, and what does it feed? It feeds the brain and you'll see a lot of that, um, you know, red foods are going to help nourish blood, you know? So we know that there's similarities in nature for a reason. And yeah, yeah that, that, that's really interesting with the placenta and the brain. Yes, it is. That is fascinating. Well, brain health is so important. Um, We all want to have our optimal function. We want to be there to support our families. And when we feel not our best, it's really hard. And it's so nice to know that, um, you know, the acupuncture can help with so many different aspects of that. Yeah, that spirulina and barley juice grass powder, both of those are really, really great for the the brain. They help clear out heavy metals. Um, yeah. And heavy metals, you know, affect your brain as far as memory. It's been... Um, it's linked related. to dementia too, right? Dementia, for anxiety, mm-hmm. and depression. So that's another reason why I like to, to get... Um, people on those two specific herbs, two of my favorites. Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. That's important Mm -hmm. to mention. Well, I think, um, no, well, not every woman, but most women (laughs) who've been pregnant have had some type of either heartburn or indigestion, whether, or nausea, um, and in that, either in that first trimester or late in the third trimester, when baby starts to take up more space and push up into our diaphragm and yeah. into our digestion and shift everything. Mm-hmm. So I would love for you to share a little bit more about how you can support that and how acupuncture affects that. Uh, you know, I love to get women on or men, anybody with any sort of de- digestive issues on to celery juice. I know that that is um, kind of been out in the press a whole bunch as of late, but the thing is, is it really, really works. It is wonderful for healing the digestive system. It will take down heartburn, stomach discomfort, reflux, bloating, all of those things. Um, It is a real healer of the entire digestive tract. It's antiviral. It's super hydrating. Um, So that is, that's a really big piece because I would really rather um, pregnant women try to treat these sort of things with food rather Uh than um, antacids, for instance. Um, And so the celery juice that you're mentioning do you recommend that people juice themselves? Can they get yes. this somewhere? Or, I mean, I'm yes. sure that there's juice places around, but. Yeah, um, so ideally you want to do it yourself. It's mm-hmm. really three bucks a day and mm-hmm. it just does so much wonderful um, stuff to your system. You want to drink 12 to 14 ounces first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. And you don't want to mix anything with it. You know, I have a lot of patients who say, I hate celery. I just don't think that I could do it. But then they start drinking it and they don't mind the celery juice for some reason. You want to make it in the moment. So get yourself a juicer on Amazon Mm -hmm. for a hundred bucks. Okay. And, um, will, will I have a question because I love celery, right? But I don't necessarily, I've never really tried celery juice a lot. So would, if I, if I had trouble getting down 14 ounces, could I still have like eight to six and still of course, <laughs> make of an course. effect? You could ease right into it. And, and some people, they need to do that, you know, take down as much as you can. Um, you want to make sure that you get organic celery because mm-hmm. it is a highly sp- sprayed veg. Uh, um, yes. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it's, it's my very, very favorite, one of my very favorite foods to get folks on because they get well faster. Quicker. Mm-hmm. Exactly. To consider. <clears throat> and once they start, it's just like a repetition. Um, yeah. And I just yeah. say do it as many mornings a week as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, the hydration piece is really, really wonderful for moms because then if if you decide to breastfeed, you know, you end up just getting so dehydrated, (laughs) just feeling like they're sucking the life out of you. So 
it's a great um, way to very gently heal, detox, and hydrate. And it's perfectly safe for the baby. So it's good to do all through your pregnancy, even while you're breastfeeding. Okay. Awesome. Well, that sounds fabulous. It seems like it has a lot of great um, supporting benefits um, for anyone. It does. <laughs> Not just a pregnant woman. And do you do that in um, collaboration with supporting through acupuncture to help oh, relieve yeah. heartburn and indigestion? Yeah, and I like to show folks, you know, there, there are a couple points down on the legs, on the spleen and stomach channel down lower that um, I just show them how to do a little acupressure okay. on the stomach 36, maybe spleen 6, spleen 3, that they can just rub, um, you know, when they're feeling a little bit of indigestion or nausea. Um, there's some essential oils that are wonderful that you can rub on your belly. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you know, mm -hmm. um, fennel is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Peppermint, I mm -hmm. eat daily. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so lots of different supportive therapies. A lot of different if, things. Yeah. If, you know, if a if a mom doesn't feel comfortable taking pharmaceuticals or that's not her route, um, it's you know the goal is for them people to understand and know what alternatives they have. Because Absolutely. choices, choices are really wonderful thing. And so, yes, they are. Mm -hmm. So, well, awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit more. We're going to move along about, we talked about this a little bit before, but sleep is um, something that women um, experience either needing more of it or having trouble with um, getting enough or restlessness, I guess. Um, either because they're dealing with other concerns or just um, the hormonal changes and transitions. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, sleep is something that, as we all, all know, is, is crucial and important for um, vitality and health. And um, when you're pregnant, it can just be really, really, you know, in the early stages, you can have the nausea and, and headaches and you're just feeling crummy, but then, as you move in and get a little bit <clears throat> larger, then you have the body aches and pains. And um, I would say that's, that's one of the things that just about everybody says, especially on the day of their treatment or the days following is that their sleep improves dramatically. Yeah, that, that, that is, I think right? across the board, absolutely. Yeah. That, Even if you're not treating for that, it's yeah. just kind of a wonderful side effect that happens. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, 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 I'm sure that anybody, anytime you get better sleep, people are going to notice that. It's <laughs> right. an automatic, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I slept so well. Right. Yes. Especially if they're not sleeping well. I mean, if it's a, it's a real issue, it's going to be very pr prevalent. Well, thanks. We're going to move along. I know, um, all of anybody who's watching this can reach out to you to learn a little bit more, but let's talk a little bit, um, Amanda, if you would, about um, if a woman has a pregnancy and her um, baby is in a breech position, what kind of support do you offer for those? Moms? Yeah, so um, acupuncture is an incredibly safe way of um, helping to turn a breech baby, and it's very non-invasive, um, and I believe it's, <coughs> it, Allison, do, or I'm sorry, um, Jennifer, do you remember if it's like catch it by 32 to 34 weeks it's worth yes it. yeah 32 to 34 yeah mm -hmm. so um so if you do know that you know your baby is breached i highly encourage you to go see an acupuncturist um allison talked about moxa earlier and mm -hmm. that's one of the tools that we'll use in conjunction with needles and um you know what they're finding is that there's somewhere in the region of 80 percent success rate at, at mm -hmm. helping to turn breech babies with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've had three um, patients that were breached that came in and all three babies turned by within two treatments. Um, so great. It that. was so cool. Yeah. And um, it was like, wow, this, you know, it's, it's, I'm never like, I never cease to be amazed by this medicine, you know? Mm -hmm. um, 
And, and you're using these points down at the very extremities. Yeah, we're using points outside the little toes, um, okay. a lot of foot and some hand points. And again, mm -hmm. using the moxa on um, the points on the outside, the little toe. And sometimes what I'll do too is, um, you know, have the, the, um, the mother's um, partner do the moxa on the toe and teach them how so then in between treatments they can um, continue that and just you know speed things up a little bit more ah so, so you give them that therapy so that they yeah. can do it at home yeah oh, that's yeah, wonderful totally mm -hmm. safe and um you know and this is a very non-stressful way to help turn a breech baby i like oh, yes. all about, we're encouraging the baby to turn you know yeah, we're not exactly. anything they're doing it on their own and so that is um i think that's just wonderful because there's no you know um manipulation you know and or trauma involved which i i've heard some some moms have um some not good experiences when it's been when the babies have been turned manually Manual, so, yes yeah. external version is not is like the last thing that moms want to have to do and really the last thing providers want to have to do for right. moms so if um if a mom is knows that her baby is breached then she really needs to go see acupuncturist between 32 and 34 weeks you're saying that's right mm -hmm. yeah and i mean and if it's or after, earlier you know okay. yeah if you know earlier definitely get in if it's after you know um we can still you know give it give it a good shot it's worth trying you mm -hmm. know um but definitely that's kind of the magic number is that 32 to 34. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, we hope that um, some mom is going to be listening to this and she's going to come and seek you out and get some support if she has a breech baby. And breech babies are just such um, wonderful experiences. I think that they, um, they get cozy in their space and they, um, they sometimes just like the space. Um, maybe it's the shape of mom's uterus that way. And sometimes they, they just want to be there and sometimes they'll turn and then they'll turn back. And, <laughs> but I do feel for the women who have that when they really want to have yeah. um, vaginal childbirth. That's, it's a stressful time for moms for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing about that, Amanda and Jennifer. So Aki, pressure, Jennifer, you mentioned just um, briefly as a tool that you can give to your clients to deal with heartburn or um, GERD or any of those things. Um, is there anything within acupressure that you would, um, that you tend to recommend for clients um, who are coming in in pregnancy? Well, I think, I think getting maternity massages are, are wonderful. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, I think that that's important. Just, I think massage for everybody is important, but certainly for, for moms um, and, and going to someone who knows um, how to work with pregnancy so that they're not um, a massaging, stimulating points or anything like that. There are certain places that we avoid in the beginning of, of being pregnant. So yeah. Uh, so any therapist, um, who's who's actually had training is going to be exactly. the best choice mm -hmm. absolutely and then of course you know all trained acupuncturists could if if you know you're coming in and you're feeling particularly sensitive you might not want needles and mm -hmm. we could do moxa and acupressure so that it just oh. feels a little less invasive mm -hmm. and more gentle okay that's awesome yeah. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, again, once we get to that time of getting ready to, um, you know, help encourage um, labor and delivery, um, I like to give acupressure points to the couple and um, points that are easy for mom to do and then points that, um, you know, the partner can, can do as well. Mm -hmm. And then that way, um, again, it's kind of treatments in between treatments and it typically gets things moving a little faster. Yeah, that's, that's Great. wonderful that you mentioned that I feel like that touch, I mean, as a doula, I'm always encouraging couples to um, have um, massage and touch and just snuggle time because I feel like it's birth is such a hormonal event that we know that oxytocin flows when we have that skin to skin touch and that mm -hmm. contact and that connection. And so I can yeah. see how acupressure therapy or, or um, in between treatments could be really helpful. 
you know, just in general and making mom feel better, making her sleep better and, you know, maybe helping her go into labor. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. Well, we are at a point where we're just going to, um, kind of wrap this whole wonderful webinar up and wanted to thank um, Jennifer and Amanda for sharing all of their great, wonderful experience working with moms in pregnancy and beyond tonight. And we hope that if you're watching this, that you will reach out to um, connect with an acupuncturist. Hopefully if you're in the um, Tri-Cities area or in Northwestern North Carolina, that you can reach out to Jennifer or to um, Amanda and, and get some support with that because acupuncture is a safe and effective way to help support a woman, um, both prenatally or preconception, prenatally in birth and labor and in that postpartum. So I really appreciate you ladies being here tonight. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is great. I know a good bit about acupuncture, but I learned more. So I'm so excited. <laughs> and um, I did want to share um, your information um, with everyone. So if they want to um, connect with you, they can reach you at these locations. Amanda um, is in Kingsport, Tennessee at Tri-Cities Acupuncture and Wellness. And Jennifer West is at West Wellness in the Boone Professional Center in Boone, North Carolina. So we hope that you will um, feel ready to venture into acupuncture if you have never had it before and you really want some therapy and support for your pregnancy um, or before pregnancy. We have um, learned a lot today and I really appreciate it. I will um, look forward to seeing um, seeing you ladies at another time. Thanks so much again for coming and being with us tonight. And um, if you want to reach out to High Country Doulas, you can reach out to us at our website, um, which is highcountrydoulas.com, or you can email us at info at highcountrydoulas.com, or call us at 828-278-8949. We are here to support you to have a healthier, um, healthier and happier experience through your pregnancy, through your labor and birth and beyond.